What happens when a tiger eats an animal? The predator's digestive system breaks the prey into tinier and tinier parts and these parts get reassembled into the healthy cells of the predator's body. The tiger becomes stronger while the prey disappears. An aggressive civilization is also like a predator that dismembers a defeated or non-aggressive civilization into smaller and digestible parts. It picks and chooses whatever assets and qualities it wants to appropriate. For example, European colonizers of America gained a lot of riches from Native Americans who had lived here for 20,000 years. Besides taking their hard assets like land, many other things from Native American culture got digested into what is now considered mainstream American culture. But the original natives of America disappeared from the mainstream even in their own land. They ended up in museums, as exotic artifacts, or as drunk people living in isolated spaces designated for them. Similarly, China is very systematically and violently digesting Tibetan civilization today. Whatever parts of the prey threaten the core principles or mechanisms of the host are not digestible. They must be rejected and trashed just like a tiger excretes waste. The appropriated elements get mapped onto the metaphysics, language and social structures of the dominant civilization. Historians of the dominant side reformulate the history of the people they have digested. The victim civilization which gets hunted and consumed becomes depleted of its cultural and social capital. You should know that Islam digested the Arab culture which existed before. This is why Islam contains many things which have nothing to do with religion but happen to be Arabic ways of life. Dead civilizations often turn into prestigious assets displayed in Western museums. Scholars come to study them and the public comes to admire them. The digested items have become domesticated and are no longer foreign to the host civilization but become property of the host. The key point is that the digested entity ceases to exist as itself. It is not available as a living resource for further human evolution and diversity. A very important example of this is the way what we call the West came about as a result of Romans digesting many others. The Romans and Greeks were rivals until the Romans defeated the Greeks and digested their civilization. Useful parts of Greek culture became a part of the Roman Empire, like philosophy, art and lifestyle. But Greek civilization lost its vibrancy and stopped evolving further. Later. Rome also digested Christianity and this is how the Roman Catholic Church began. The church was a military force and it conquered all of Europe. Many symbols, rituals, festivals and religious ideas came to Christianity from the so-called pagans, a name given to pre-Christian Europeans. But these pagan faiths were demonized and destroyed. This series of conquests and digestions produced an amalgamation which gradually solidified into what is called the West. So the West is not some ancient civilization. It's a synthetic unity of Roman and Greek civilizations, plus Christianity and then paganism. There are many such examples in world history. You might wonder, why have I invested so much in studying digestion in great detail? My main interest has been to understand the digestion of Indian civilization into the West because this is a major untold story. What I have uncovered will dramatically change our ideas on Indian civilization and history. It will also require rewriting the history of the West because many Western things are of Indian origin but falsely attributed to other sources. Even navigating the future is at stake. Decolonizing our minds and rediscovering our past requires reversing the effects of this digestion. The well-being of humanity, not just Indians, requires a proper understanding of many Indian contributions which hold great promise for the future. As an example, we must stop the rapid digestion of Ayurveda into Western reductionist medicine which is going on. A proper Vedic understanding of wellness will lead to major breakthroughs for all of humanity. Digestion is inherently a destructive process. 
Because the digested culture is considered redundant, its roots are allowed to atrophy. Sometimes they are even intentionally destroyed. It is not fair trade between equal cultures. The site getting digested is compromised, marginalized, and eventually ceases to be a living, thriving civilization. The term cultural genocide is appropriate. Unlike the case of a physical genocide where an entire community is physically killed, in this case the culture is killed even though the individuals physically survive. The term genocide was coined by a man named Raphael Lemkin. His definition of genocide included cultural genocide as well. His draft for the UN law on genocides said that genocide is not limited to the physical destruction of a people. He wanted to include, quote, disintegration of the political and social institutions of culture, language, national feelings, religion. This clause of cultural genocide was heavily opposed by certain countries because they worried they would be accused of such genocide. It was removed in the final version of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. In December 1948, the UN General Assembly passed Resolution 260 adopting the law on genocides, but cultural genocide was not included as a crime. I do believe that civilizations must share their contributions with each other with mutual respect. But this is very different from digestion. For over a thousand years, India exported Buddhism, various sciences, medicine, language, art, agriculture, etc. to every corner of Asia, including China, Mongolia, Southeast Asia, and indirectly Japan and Korea. The histories taught in those ancient countries give proper credit and details of this Indian knowledge they received. There was never any armed invasion by India or attempt to appoint rulers in those countries or to collect taxes and tributes from them or to replace their languages, identities or rewrite their history. Many Asian nations sent their brightest students to places in India like Nalanda University to bring back knowledge just like students today want to go to American Ivy Leagues. The entire transfer of Indian civilization arguably the largest scale and carried over the longest period of any such transfer in world history was done without physical or cultural violence. There was no attempt to digest others or harm their own national identity. Indian Siddhantas or metaphysical theories did not get imposed as universalism in the same manner as European thought has been imposed worldwide to replace other systems. I want you to resist being digested. Resist the trend of replacing Shastras with digested versions which are considered to be Western knowledge.